All right, guys, we're back in my garage for another video. And today we are going to be talking about water pumps. And this is something that was probably just a matter of time before this became a topic of discussion on the channel. But I was kind of avoiding it. I felt like, you know, there weren't really any big issues. And then, of course, I posted my video a couple days ago where I replaced the water pump on my 440i. And that sparked a bunch of questions. A bunch of people were asking me about water pump maintenance and reliability. So I figured it's about time that I've created this video. So hopefully this will help answer any questions that you guys might have about the water pumps on our cars and it'll give you a little more confidence on how you can deal with it if you're looking at having a higher mileage B58. Now for everybody that's new to the channel, I create videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So let's go ahead and talk about it. This is my water pump. This is the pump that I pulled off of my 440i. And I created that video because I did need to replace my water pump. But a bunch of people asked two main questions. How many miles were on my 440i? And what actually caused the water pump to fail? And I can answer those questions pretty simply. But the first thing to understand is my car does have 25,000 miles. It is relatively low, even though it's a couple years old. I really don't drive it like daily. I don't have to drive it every single day. So I don't have that many miles on my car. Now, the reason why it failed is because of something that I caused. It wasn't just a failure that's typical for B58s or anything like that in the sense that it was something I did. So a couple weeks ago, I also posted another video where I installed Inconel heat shield on my turbo. And that required me removing the turbo from my car. And as a part of that, I had to remove the oil lines and the coolant lines. So when you remove the coolant lines, some of the coolant drains out. And you guys know when you put your turbo back on, you need to top off your coolant, bleed the system, and make sure everything's good to go before you drive it. I did not do that. And I know this is probably a shock to a lot of you guys. Like, how did I make a mistake? You didn't know that I ever messed up. This is actually the first mistake I've ever made. So you're capturing it live. Congratulations. But yes, I did forget to top off my coolant and bleed the cooling system. Now, the way that things actually happened for me was I bolted the turbo onto my car, went for a test drive, and things are starting to cool down now. So I had the heat on, and I noticed that hot air wasn't coming out of the vents. Um, so I thought about it a little bit, and then I realized I forgot to properly top off the cooling system. So drove the car back home, topped off my coolant, bled the system, did that whole process, was good to go. Except... About two days later, I got my coolant low warning light. And first of all, that's something that kind of annoys me. I'm still not quite understanding how that sensor works. There have been several times where I've found the coolant to be low or like almost empty in the coolant reservoir and no warning came on in the iDrive. So not really sure why that works sometimes and it doesn't. But in this case, it came on. So I pulled back in, checked my coolant levels, realized that it had been continually dropping after I bled the system. And um, that's when I looked around in front of the engine and I saw around the subframe area that there was coolant leaking. The label that's kind of right there on top of the subframe was like turning blue and soaking up coolant. So that indicated to me that the water pump was probably leaking. Now I wasn't hundred percent sure. I know there are a bunch of connections in front of there where it could leak from, but I figured the coolant pump was relatively cheap, something I could create a DIY with. So I went ahead and just bought it and replaced it. Now, my initial assumption was that this gasket around the perimeter is what was leaking. And that's something that's pretty common on other vehicles, like on my GLI. I had probably 14 different revisions of that water pump from Volkswagen. All of them leaked from that gasket around the perimeter. So I just kind of assumed that that's where it was coming from. But when I actually did the replacement, I found that this little rubber plug at the bottom with a hole in it is where the coolant was actually coming from. And hopefully you guys can see that it's actually even still wet now. Um, it's a couple of days later, but I realized that it was leaking from that hole, not the gasket. So initially my thoughts were, oh, if you don't want to replace the whole water pump and you have this leak, maybe you can just replace this gasket here. But that's not the case. In my case, I had to replace the whole water pump to fix this issue. So I dug a little bit deeper and basically this is a weep hole that's built into the water pump. Something that you got to understand is the coolant in our cooling system isn't just for 
helping, you know, prevent the water from freezing when it gets really cold. But it also is a lubricant inside of our cooling system. So it helps make sure that all the coolant hoses stay flexible and all the seals stay lubricated. Because my coolant was so low, it pretty much burnt out the seal inside of this water pump. So the seal burnt out and failed because the coolant was so low in my cooling system and I ran it without properly topping it off and bleeding the system. Now, is this a super common failure? I would say if your coolant isn't low, it should not be a common failure. Yes, over time that seal can wear out and it's something that's a good idea to keep an eye on. Just look for potential leaks in front of the engine whenever you're doing your regular service. But this isn't necessarily like a maintenance item. This isn't something that you have to replace regularly. Unlike a lot of older BMWs, we do not rely on an electric water pump for our engine cooling. So again, referencing another car I have on my X5, it has the N52 naturally aspirated straight six, and my water pump failed literally like 200 miles past 100K. So I had to replace that because the electric water pump has a tendency to fail when it gets to higher mileage or when it just gets older. On our cars, because this is a mechanical pump, it's actually very reliable in most cases, especially on the Gen 1 B58s. Sometimes people have had leaks from there, but it's not something that's super common or not something that I feel like you have to replace it at 100K. So just keep an eye on your coolant levels like always and pretty much all of your other fluids. Just make sure that everything's staying topped off. If you are seeing your coolant levels drop, then this is probably the first thing that I would look at potentially replacing. Just look around the front of your car, and if you do see coolant leaking there, it is most likely leaking from this weep hole on your water pump. Now, something that I do have to mention as I was doing this research and I saw in a couple Facebook groups is that the Gen 2 is not quite as lucky. Their water pumps do have a pretty significant issue. So some of the water pumps have an issue where this pulley pretty much comes off. And what I've seen in the Facebook groups is people hear like maybe a little bit of a rattle coming from the front of the engine bay that they're not really sure where it's coming from. And then when they're driving, they might hear a big bang and then their coolant warning light comes on or their engine overheating light comes on. And so they pull over and check and realize that this entire pulley has come off of the water pump. So obviously that's a pretty catastrophic failure. The good news is there is a TSB out there. There is an updated part. So basically just make sure that you have that updated part on your B58 if you have like an M340i or something like that. And that will help ensure that you don't run into that issue but it seems like there were like a bad batch of water pumps since the design isn't that different from Gen 1. But this only seems to happen on Gen 2 vehicles. They just sometimes have coolant pumps that decide to explode. So that is something I wanted to put out in front of you guys. I'll put the TSB on the screen so that you guys can see the notes. And you can call your dealership. You know, they can use your VIN or do a quick check just to make sure you're not affected by that TSB. And it's not something that you actually need to update in order to you know make sure your car is as reliable as possible. But yeah, like I said, it's still a German car. I guess water pump issues are inevitable. Ultimately, I still feel like at least from the Gen 1, our water pumps are extremely reliable. And for the Gen 2, just make sure that you don't have that older water pump, get it updated if you do, and then you should be able to enjoy your car for a very long time. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.